All right. So today we're going to be talking about uh, multiple time frames and how to use them to boost your profitability. Now, many people, uh, they have this, I guess, habit of sticking to the one or the five minute and only using that uh, as sufficient data to be able to produce a trade or to make a trade or to have an idea of a setup. Uh, but really and truthfully, you really need more than just one chart or even two time frames. What you really need is a real good scope of things. And most of traders uh, and most unsuccessful or, or people who are on the verge of being successful, one of their issues is that uh, they're, only, they're only looking at the surface. They're not looking at what lurks beneath. Uh, and I know this is one of the cliches we have in our, in our education, but it, it's really true. So what you want to do is you want to be looking at the 1, the 5, the 15, and the hourly, especially for intraday because hourly is the last time frame before uh, you get into the daily, and the daily does not work on intraday time frames anymore. So we use the hourly 15, 5, and 1. Now, benefits of using uh, multiple charts. So finding overlapping price bumpers. Now what overlapping price bumpers mean is that on the one minute you may have uh, the five period moving average at a price of seventy dollars let's say and then all of a sudden you see on the five minute you see the twenty period moving average with the same price right so even though they're not the same moving averages uh, because they're the same prices this is not a coincidence so you don't take it as a coincidence you take it as a stronger reaction zone. Okay, just like you look at support and resistance, price bumpers are the same. We don't know whether they're going to break or if they're going to bounce off of them. Nobody knows. Okay, all we do know is that this is going to be a level where the price is going to react and it's going to make some sort of movement with a little bit more boost of volume behind it. Uh, so, if you have two support lines in two different time frames that are the same price level, then that's going to be extraordinary and it's going to uh, 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 have much more weight in terms of holding that uh, price level. Okay. Now, one of the most important things is finding larger impending moves. And this is actually one of the most uh, uh, biggest misconceptions that a lot of people have, or not misconceptions, I would say, I would say mistakes that they make. And it goes like this. So a trader gets into a trade, he's going long, it works out great, it's moving up, he's making money, um, and he gets out. He hits his target, all of a sudden the stock, it kind of flattens for a little bit, and then what does it do? It pops even more. It goes another 50 cents. Okay, And then this trader is going, damn, how did I miss that? How come I was unable to be able to see this impending move? How can I figure out how to find a, a larger move? When, when should I hold or when should I sell? These are, these are things that fit into this category and we'll go deeper into it. Importance of convergence and divergence. Now, I've done many webinars on this and this is very important. This is based off of the uh, three market concepts that are very simplistic, yet most people avoid them and are unaware of them. And this allows you to be able to know whether the market conditions are good enough for you to be able to enter a trade. Because just because you have a setup or you have a strategy or you have a secret setup or a, a, a certain a strategy that works, just because the strategy is being shown or it's ready to go doesn't mean it's going to work every single time. And that goes for every single person's strategy, anyone out there, even algos. So what you have to do is you have to be picky and you have to still know whether the market conditions are in your favor or they're not in your favor. And this is what convergence and divergence uh, normally do to help you with figuring out whether it's a good time to trade or it's a bad time to trade and you're going to get faked out or you're going to get chopped around. Now, uh, just to stop here for a second, if you guys have any questions, it's an open discussion. That's how I like it. So if you have any questions... Uh, while we're uh, moving ahead, then um, let me know, okay? Now, 
the next thing it could do is help with target projections, and we'll get we'll get to that. I'm not going to go into detail yet. Now, laws of linearity is uh, another important key factor that we teach in our level one class, and this is one of the five laws of the markets that we teach. And laws of linearity basically mean that if a setup can occur on the one minute, a certain setup, let's just say a cup, then it's going to work the same way on any other time frame or any other security. Okay? And that is called laws of linearity. Whatever works on the one minute will work on the five minute, 15 minute, 60 minute, daily, uh, weekly, and monthly. Okay? The only difference is the price range and the time exposure it's going to take in order to move, uh, uh, to make a move that is uh, 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 identifiable enough to be a good move for that type of particular uh, chart or time frame. And seeing what lurks beneath, as I said before. So let's go to the next one. So price bumpers, as I said before, are price levels where a reaction will happen. Either the price will get deflected away from the bumper or will break and pass through the bumper towards the next bumper level. And as I stated before, overlapping bumpers are when two or more indicators from different charts intersect each other or overlap each other. <laughs> so if any bumpers are overlapping, then this will give a stronger sentiment to the price level near a particular bumper. And this could definitely give you a better picture of where the stock is heading or where uh, the stock is looking to go. And this could definitely give you something we call a foreshadowing ability to be able to make a better uh, decision. Anybody have questions so far? Everybody following through? Or we're going to be shy. So here it is, overlapping price bumpers. And here's a good way to give an example. On, the fi on, the, on this chart time frame, okay, this is the 15, we see here a 5MA. Okay, now the 5MA is at 81.01, and then on the on the five-minute chart we have the 15-minute MA. Oh, sorry, this is the weekly and this is the monthly. Okay, I apologize. So the weekly you could see has the same price, 81.01. All right. Now because of that, we could use this as an overlapping bumper that has a stronger sentiment to it than a normal bumper, let's say. So, for instance, if we were looking to go short here, then in, in the most case, we'll probably use the trailing stop of the 15 MA, okay, which is also the trailing stop of the 5 MA of the monthly. All right, so that is basically how an overlapping price bumper would be recognized and used. So, as I said before, laws of linearity, um, you could take any indicator or pattern used to trade the markets and it should follow the law of linearity. So it should apply equally to a one minute time frame as it does to a 60 minute or monthly time frame. They should be scalable proportionately and relatively. This means that a breakout pattern on a wider time frame should react relatively identically on a shorter time frame. And just to cut in between this, it's also vice versa. Okay? So we have a domino effect here that could happen from the one minute all the way to the monthly. Or we could use the foreshadowing effect and go from the monthly down to the uh, to the one minute. Okay, it's it's all a string of events that are tied together. Okay, so the shorter time frames react quicker with more limited reactions on a small price range, whereas the wider time frames expand proportionately and rel relatively in range. Now, like I said, vice versa, shorter time frames react quicker and shorter. Um, so what is powerful on a five minute time frame is even more powerful on a daily time frame. Okay? The only thing you have to recognize is that it's going to take longer to be able to materialize, we could say. So here we have one setup showing how laws of linearity and how using multiple time frames could be in the benefit. So one strategy we have here from Alpha 7 is called the market structure low and it's a reversal. So what it contains is a three candle sequence which contains a new low, a lower low, and then a higher low. And at the break of the higher low, if the stochastics are crossed up, 
then we could enter in on the break of the higher low. This candle right here with, with the red line. Now, normally, someone's only going to be trading on the one minute, right? Um, so they're only seeing the one minute, and they don't really know what's going on. Is there more definition? Is there anything else I could rely on? And if they just open up the five minute, they could see that there's another setup that we use that is simultaneously breaking out at the same time the market structure low is forming on the one minute. So wait a sec, what do we have here? We have an instantaneous breakout on both time frames. And not only that, but it's two different setups that we teach happening instantaneously. So this gives us the ability to, uh, uh, to strengthen our, our direction in our, uh, our setup and give us more conviction that the stock will move in that direction. And this is what we call laws of convergence when not just one time frame is, is moving in, in uh, an upwards direction, but multiple time frames are moving in an upwards direction, which means that you're having less headwinds blocking you for to your direction. It's almost like you're on a wave and then there's a bigger wave going against you. What's going to happen? You're going to get pushed back. Same thing happens to stocks, okay? Now, convergence and divergence. So convergence has to deal with one entity. Okay, so we could be talking about Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. That's, it's only one entity. And what it means is that it's moving in one direction for a limited duration of time. Okay, so it could either be moving up for a limited duration of time or moving down for a limited duration of time. And divergence, I guess you, you could take it from here, is that it's moving in opposite directions for a limited duration of time. Okay, so uh, here is spot the convergence sequence. All right, there's one of them that is converging, and here's spot the divergence. I'll give you about two minutes. If any of you guys want to play, just put in your answers right here. I'll give it about a minute. There's a bunch in you here, a bunch of you here, so don't be shy. All right, so we'll move forward then. So converging lanes, I'll explain this. Now, since we have a, a one minute chart, a five minute chart, a 15 minute chart, and a 60 minute chart, we could use basically, uh, 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 for figurative speaking, uh, uh, basically a scale, okay? So if we have the one minute going down and the five minute going down and the 15 minute going down and the 60 minute going down, then obviously all the intraday lanes, all the intraday time frames are moving in one direction. So are you going to have less pullback or are you going to have a greater pullback? And the answer is you're going to have less of a pullback because you have less things that are going against you. Okay, so when you have less things going against you, you have a clear price move. Things move more fluidly and, uh, and much faster with a lot more follow through. And that's the type of market you want to be trading in. Okay. You want to be trading when things are aligned. Just like when the, the planets are aligned, you want to wait until the, the, all the different time frames are aligned. Now, divergent lanes are opposite, right? So we have the one minute going up. We have the five minute, oh, sorry, we have the one minute going down. We have the five minute going up. We have the 15 minute going down. And we have the 60 minute going up. So hang on a sec. We got two down and two up. That kind of balances it out, right? So right there and then, we could see that we have di a divergence, okay? There's too much things that are going against us. You want to go down? Wait a sec, but the five minute is going up. You want to go up? Wait a sec, the 15 minute is going down. Okay, so anywhere you look ahead, it's always going against your direction, all right? And this is what you want to be aware of and, and stay away from, all right? Even if you see a setup, okay? It could be called something we call a make or break. Now, usually you want the scales in your favor, so if you have, have at least three out of the four time frames going in your direction, it's enough to be able to consider it a converging stock, okay? Now, how to find larger impending moves. As I said before, um, a lot of people get out too early, and that's because they're not looking at the wider time frames. So let's see an example of this. Here's the one minute. 
Now, the one minute, we have an entry here on something we call a, a mini pub. As you can see, we had a, a, a selling candle, and then as the selling candle held the 5MA, uh, the next candle we took it for a long. All right. Now, as price bumpers and for targets, our target range is going to be anywhere from the middle Bollinger Band or at least to uh, the upper Bollinger Band or the break of the five period moving average, whichever one comes first. So obviously, we stopped out here when it broke the five period moving average. So once you sell over here, you're done. Your trade is done. But if you were looking at the five minute, okay, you would see that another setup was forming. And then we could see what lurks beneath. Wait a sec, wait a sec. I'm not going to get out here. Maybe I'll partial out, partial out a little bit here. But the five minute is still telling me that it's looking to go higher with this setup. And then lo and behold, the setup breaks out and continues to go on the next leg up. All right. And this is how you're able to find larger impending moves. And this is how you use foreshadowing to your advantage. By looking at the wider time frames, okay, you'll be able to see bigger moves that are yet to be done. And you should just stick around and be able to see that form. Now, as I was stating uh, with the earlier slide, how do we find target projections? Uh, a lot of people don't know. That's a, a, a big issue for a lot of traders. They know how to get in, but they don't know where to get out. And even when they get out, it's usually never enough because they continue to look at the stock and see it go higher. You have to have conviction with your targets. So by looking at multiple time frames, we could actually see targets that we were unable to see before. All right. So for instance, let's say you are in a stock and it is flying. Now, you already partialed out, you took, now you have some lateral shares left and you're going for the run. Where do you get out? You're lost, right? You don't know where your next exit is. You, don't, you can't figure it out. However, by looking at the wider time frames, all right, here's the one minute pup, and we get out at the upper Bollinger Band, all right? Now, once we get out the upper Bollinger Band, that's it, you're done. But... If you look at the five minute, okay, we could see that there's more targets, all right, because we held it. Now, it didn't break the 5MA, all right, so we know that we could actually hold it even higher. Now, since we already partialed out at our first target, which is the upper Bollinger Band, on the one minute, what do we use? We can't find anything, but the five minute will show you where to use. So what do we use? We use the upper Bollinger Band on the five minute. So we were able to take it all the way up. To 32.42, guys. All right. So instead of seeing this small move, we were able to take the targets all the way to this move because we're looking more deeper. And it doesn't have to be with the one in five minute. It could be with the 15 minute, 60 minute. All right. Because once this is done, guess what's happening? 15 minute is ready to move the same way. And then we go to the next bumper on the 15 minute. And that's about it, guys. Um, I hope you were able to take something from there. It is going to be recorded, so you're able to go back. Um, does anybody have any questions about what we went over? I'll give a minute if anyone has any questions. If not, it's fine. Uh, we'll put this on the recording, and you guys could watch this. I guarantee watch this a couple times, guys. It's only about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and just test it out. That's, that's what you want to prove me wrong. Test it out and show me that it doesn't work, okay? Because it works, all right? By adding those multiple time frames and using what I told you, you will be able to increase your profitability, okay? So it seems like nobody has any questions. I'll leave it off from there. I hope you guys enjoyed and hope to see you in our upcoming webinars. Have a great day, guys.